you have modeled a tire and you want to put a logo on it. In my case, I want to put Firestone on it. I went to the internet and found an SVG file, but the problem is the SVG file is linear. It's not curved to match the tire. In this short video, I want to show you the process of taking a straight logo and curving it to match an object. Let's get started. The first thing you want to note is that the, basically the wall of this tire is on the YZ plane, green, blue. So that gives you a place to put your SVG logo in your sketch. So now we go to a new file and we're going to import or insert the SVG file. I'm going to browse to it, pick on it. And then I'm going to place it on the YZ plane. Now I've done some preliminary measurements and I know I want the scale of this logo to be 2.5. Of course, you'll do have to do this for yourself. Next thing you want to do, I want to center it up. I'm going to center it up on the origin about the S. This approximate is all you need to do. Now I find out that Looking at all my profiles, the N has an error. It will not turn into a profile like the rest of them. If I look close, I find there's a small gap right there. So that's easy to fix. I'll go to the Unfix tool, turn off the fixed geometry, and just join the two points together. That fixed that real quick. Now, first thing you want to do is Go ahead and extrude this to one side. Be sure you leave the openings for the E's and the O's. And I want to go, I'm working in inches, so I'm going to go to a quarter inch on one side. That makes a new body. The way we're going to make this into a curve, you use a piece of sheet metal. So go into a new sketch on the same plane, the YZ and you want to sketch an arc. I'm going to use a three-point arc, but that's up to you. I'll make sure the arc is long enough to encompass the complete word Firestone. Pick my two points, pick the arc, and then I'm going to add a horizontal constraint between the two endpoints just to kind of control it. Now the next step is critical. You must add a little short line, straight line, that's tangent to the end of it. If you can't sketch a tangent, use a constraint. Make sure it's tangent. Next thing I'm going to dimension it from a previous dimension I took from the tire is the radius of this curve I want is 33.75 divided by 2. That's the radius of the curve. No more constraints are needed. Go ahead and finish your sketch. Next thing we'll do is turn to a piece of sheet metal. Now your style of sheet metal is not important, it's just so long as you can see it. This was a quarter inch thick, so what you want to do is make a flange coming out one direction away from the YZ plane, and I don't want it the same thickness of this, so I'm going to make it 0.15. This was 0.25, I'll make it 0.15. I don't want it to break the top surface. Say OK. The next step you want to go is to go up under Modify and pick Unfold. Remember that little straight line we made? That is the part you're going to select for the Unfold operation. You cannot select anything except that straight area, so if you made an error back when you made your sketch, you need to correct that. So I pick that and you notice it straightens because I have this checkbox. If you don't have the checkbox, check it and everything will unfold. Say OK. Now the previous extrusions will gray out. That's one of the things in sheet metal. Just ignore it for the time being. The next thing we want to do is align this to the uh, a plane in the origin. So I'm going to turn the origin on and the one I want to use is the XY which is this one right here. So I'll go up under modify, align, and I'll pick one of the flat surfaces, either the bottom or the top, and then I'm going to pick on that plane. It aligns it 
perfectly. So now you can turn your origin back off. And if you look down, it, you'll notice that it's going flush with the back, but doesn't quite break through the front. That's critical. Next step you want to do is go ahead and go to the solid environment and pick combine. Now this is critical. You keep the order right. You want to pick the piece of sheet metal first and then you can put a wind around all the other extrusions. You want to be joined and you don't want to add a checkbox. Say OK. Now we have one body, one piece of sheet metal. Now if you have left the sheet metal environment, go back to it and you'll see you refold. After you unfold something, you must refold it. And when you refold, you get the curve that you had originally sketched out in the arc. At this point, you want to make a new sketch on the same plane, the YZ. You want to go in under project and you want to project all the letters into the sketch. Be careful not to pick any of the inside of the O's or the E's or anything closed. You can leave on projection link if you like. Say OK. You have a new sketch. As you can see. Go up under your bodies and turn off the sheet metal body and you now have a new arc text or new arc graphic that you can transfer into your tire. I'm still in my sketch as you can see. If you have left it, you need to come back and edit this sketch. The next thing I want to do is put a wind around everything, but I don't want the origin. I want this center, but I, that's the center of my arc, but I don't want the origin. So hold on my control key and deselect it. Next thing we'll do, right click in the background and you'll get copy. Now we'll move into the tire model. First thing you want to do is make an offset plane that's ahead of the tire. So I'm going to pick on this and I'm going to move it out. I'll just go at a reasonable distance, say like 12 inches. Next thing I'm going to do is make a sketch on that new plane. I'm going to go back to isometric so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to project geometry with P from the keyboard and I want to project the center to get the inside edge to get a center. I'll say OK. Next thing I want to do is paste. Right click and paste which brings in my copied curve logo. I want to keep my dialog open because I want to move point to point. I want to go from the center point of the sketch to the center point of the logo. Excuse me, of the tire. I apologize. And that puts it rounded right up top. You can see it's now lined up with the tire. So go ahead now and finish your sketch. The last step is pretty straightforward. Finish your sketch. Go up under Create. Pick up Emboss. And pick on your profiles. Again, be sure you don't pick the insides of E's and O's and things like that. So now I'll pick my face, which is this one, and I'm going to put in a sixteenth of an inch. Say OK, and I have my embossed Firestone logo, as you can see. So you're all finished, but I am going to continue with this video to show you how to put white lettering on top of it, if you want to stick around. In order to make this process very efficient, I'm going to set up a selection set. I'll go to select and I'm going to go down to selection priority. I'm going to go to faces. So I'll pick that and I'm going to put a window around everything here. All the Firestone. Now I need to zoom up, hold down my control key and get rid of the inside of the E's and O's. So that's not part of my selection set. Now the right click on the background and you'll say create selection set which adds it to the browser, as you can see, 76 edges. That includes the front surfaces and all the sidewalls. Next thing you want to do is hit 
A on the keyboard will bring up the appearances dialog. Now I've got, I'm going to use paint white. I'm going to put it up into this design. I'm going to go to faces. I'm going to pick on over here and pick on the selection set, which picks up it all. Take this, drag it over, and let it go. And you'll see that it goes on top of the selection set. Say close and you're all done. So now you got a real nice looking tire with Firestone and white lettering. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it does you do better modeling in Fusion 360 using this tip.